Howdy, it's Jim Morado, and this is May, early May 2021, and we are in San Antonio, Texas, and you probably recognize that as the Alamo. In fact, if you're not even familiar with the Alamo, you can probably look at that and your brain will tell you, oh, that's the Alamo. You might recognize it from such movies as, uh, you know, I think it was in an episode of King of the Hill, I remember that. I remember Hank got locked in there. And, uh, of course, there's the Pee Wee Herman stuff. Oh, and let, let me read this real quick. That sign says, This wall foundation of adobe bricks formed part of the Indian quarters built during the construction of the West Wall of the Alamo in about 1750. During the siege of the Alamo, February 23rd through March 6th, 1836, some of the Indian quarters served as barracks for the Texas Defenders. And that's uh, kind of on the sidewalk across the street from the Alamo. They've got that little kind of window looking into some of the uh, remains that are there. But yeah, we're, we're right in front of the Alamo, and that they are doing some construction, reconstruction kind of stuff. So they've got some barriers up. It's not quite as open. Uh, as it has been in the past. This bird seems to be enjoying that puddle, though. I like that bird quite a bit. Yeah, but the Alamo. This was our third visit to San Antonio, our third visit to the Alamo. Yeah, when, when I go somewhere, I like to read up on it, and I've read a ton on the Alamo. I really... Yeah, it's one of those rabbit holes. You go down, and you can get kind of obsessed with it. And I've been on an Alamo kick now for several years. That's the line to go into the Alamo on the day we were there. And it, it wasn't too big. It's um, The previous years I was there right around the anniversary of the battle and one of the days the weather was good and everything and there was there was a little bit of a crowd there but it's never any it's never been a massive crowd or anything. And then we, um, actually we entered, we went through the chapel, and they do not allow photos or videos in the chapel. They're, they're online, you can look for them, but I did not want to be disrespectful, so I did not film or take pictures inside of the chapel. But once you go through the chapel, you're kind of in the back area. And, you know, they've got these giant goldfish koi guys, and they were, they were fun to look at. And there's some displays, there's reenactors, there's kind of a little museum area. They were doing some presentations there this day. I know in the past, uh, there's a like a battlefield tour that we've done, where a little guide, you, you, you have a headset on, and you can kind of hear him through his kind of microphone that he wears, but they kind of give you, give you a little tour of the whole, of the whole fort. And that, that was that was exciting. I'm sure they're still doing that, but we did not do that on this trip. And there's also a nice museum that's that's not part of the Alamo, but it's in the um, it's over in the mall, which is there's a mall, a baseball's throw away from the Alamo, and they they have some nice some really nice displays and some nice relics on the Alamo, uh, the the Briscoe Western Museum of Art. They've also got some nice relics and a really nice, I believe, 32, uh, one thirty-second scale diorama on the Alamo. So, yeah, if you're in San Antonio, there's plenty of stuff to do relating to the Alamo, of course. And for what it's worth, I'm not going to, um, I'm, I'm actually not going to rehash the basics on this video because, if, and in fact, if you want to go ahead and just fast forward to about 14 minutes in, I end up talking to one of the reenactors here who really points out a lot of stuff and kind of tells where you know certain things happened. So that that's to me that that's the most interesting part of the video, but I thought I would just talk a little bit about what I think about uh, visiting San Antonio and the Alamo. Yeah, and before I forget, I did read um, a few books. Actually, I, I've read these books a couple of times preparing for different trips to the area. There's a Time to Stand, The Epic of the Alamo by Walter Lord. Eh, kind of an old classic telling of uh, the battle. There's Wallace O. Cheriton, 
I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Exploring the Alamo Legends, and that's a fun book that gets into a lot of, um, well, a lot of accounts and different accounts of what happened at the Alamo. There, there are many different accounts of who died when and where. A lot of debate about how Davy Crockett ended up dying. Though I, I, I think most people stick to the, you know, he pretty much died in front of the church. But there are different accounts. And of course you've got, uh, you know, the, the Mexican accounts, you've got the Texans accounts. And, you know, there's, there's conflicting stuff. And there are some second, third hand accounts that have some validity just because there are so few first hand accounts. And, of course, a few of the main witnesses that were there at the Alamo, their stories kind of change with age. And some of the reporters really uh, were looking for a dramatic story more than facts. So, if you're studying, uh, studying up on the Battle of the Alamo, there's uh, just a whole lot of different, uh, different stories, different things to read, things to think about concerning the battle. Also, yeah, just before I forget to wanted to mention Haunted History of Old San Antonio uh, by the, the couple that does the Sisters Grimm Ghost Tours. I just like those guys a lot. I like what they're doing. And that's a fun book to read. And I just always like mentioning that. Anyway, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're kind of walking around the grounds there at the Alamo. And we'll go in here. There's some little reenactors who actually are dressed pr pretty you know, accurately and nicely, except for the masks. I ended up talking to, to a couple of them. One of them I talked to for quite a while over at a different location. And, and that'll, like I said, that'll be around 14 minutes into this video. But I asked him and he points out some of the very specific sites where things happened. And I was appreciative of that. I know for several years there have been rumors discussion, I guess, and plans to actually rebuild more of the fort. You know, the Alamo that everybody thinks of, the, the, the facade of the church, that was literally just kind of the church inside of the fort, and then most of the fort just isn't there anymore. And there, there's been a lot of talk about rebuilding it. And in fact, something that was new when we came here on this trip is uh, they've, they've put up a cannon and it's they've kind of built it up it's in the exact location of where the cannon was at the fort but it's kind of kind of in a weird area it's sort of facing the uh, the Hyatt Regency San Antonio kind of in a diagonal crooked kind of way but that that's how the fort that's how that you know it's kind of where the fort was at the time of the battle. It, it, it looks a little awkward, but it's historically accurate, which is pretty cool. And um, the reenactor we talked to here in a little bit will tell us a little bit more about it. But it's kind of neat that they've actually built that part back up. And, and I do recall when we were here, oh, three, four, five years ago, and they were talking about trying to really rebuild up the fort. I mean, they, they were really talking about, you know, a lot of businesses were supposed to be leaving and they were going to knock some buildings down and really try to rebuild the Alamo. And I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure if those plans are still on or not to rebuild it up the way that they had talked about before. I'm, I'm for it, though. Yeah, I, be, I believe uh, I believe our reenactor points out. That I think that cannon was uh, from the time of the battle. There is a Texas Ranger right there. I'm, I'm walking. Well, you barely saw him from the back. I think he's in a couple other shots on this video, but he he is dead on Teddy Roosevelt as a Rough Rider. And I asked him if anybody said, "Hey, you know, you look just like Teddy Roosevelt." He said, "No, no one ever said that to him." I think he was being sarcastic, though. But yeah, there's, you know, you got these Ripley's attractions, you got gift shops. There, right over there, is the cannon, and I'm gonna go walk up to it here in a moment and go on top of it, or go over there and uh, just get some more information. But yeah, you've you've got all this fun stuff. 
you know businesses built up but this is uh this is where you know a pretty significant battle went down and there's the the memorial to the texas defenders over 180 of them and they um yeah they were all struck down and burned by order of santa anna and, and again, there's so many, so many details, so many debatable details. The exact number of men that were there. Uh, there's a rumor that one of them, well, not rumor, it's documented, but it's somewhat debatable, I guess. One of them kind of, you know, at the last minute was like, hey guys, yeah, I'm not willing to stay here and die with you. So one of them left. Otherwise, the rest of them stayed and, and uh, pretty much knew they were going to die, but decided to die fighting than to give up really nice uh, kind of courthouse place here there's a post office inside of there and I always stop there when I'm in town and there's just uh, just nice little people working there I did uh, pick up a couple of uh, knickknacks at the gift shop at the Alamo I think I bought a walk and stick medallion and uh, probably a patch even though I already had one I probably bought a different one and they were giving away two disc sets of uh, music from a it's basically a musical about the Alamo that somebody did I don't know if they were giving them away with every purchase or you had to spend so much money but I thought it was pretty cool that they were giving those away just you know here here you go and I told the guy working there like hey that's that's pretty cool of you and he gave me a second one which which I thought was pretty cool but it's uh, you know it's a music it's a musical about the Alamo and uh, I assume it was not successful, or else they would not be giving the CDs away. But I've enjoyed the CDs. I've listened to them some in my car. Yeah, they've got this little walkway up here in front of the Alamo. I know the Texas Rangers are always stationed there. I did see a kid ride a scooter through here, and one of the Rangers uh, yelled at him pretty good. Yeah, there's Teddy Roosevelt. Tell me that guy's not dead on, especially if you've seen, uh, you know, pictures of him in his Rough Rider outfit. You know, kind of the blue top and the gray pants, and I mean, yeah, that guy is just dead on. Remember that little ticket booth there, too, that little red ticket booth we just passed, because our friend, the reenactor, points that out to us later and mentions, um, gives us some history about it. We're actually the little fellow we're following there, right there. Uh, dressed as the Texican defender he's gonna walk up to the cannon across the street a as am I and in here here in a little bit I'm gonna start talking to him and kind of I think I forgot the tape a little bit but then I was like this guy's telling me some good information I better record this so I, I videotaped but yeah they, they have built this there was a house there where the cannon was on, on top of it within the fort Kind of on the corner of the of the um, of the, of the uh, Alamo, and they they've rebuilt this really nicely, and I just I think this is great. Yeah, and there's the cannon, and they've got a little picture there, and that picture is kind of showing you the view of what uh, the artillery guys would have been seeing from that angle. And uh, yeah, I just think this is great. Our our friend hints to us that there might be some other projects like this coming up. San, San Antonio is such a big town, though. There's so much going on downtown. You know, I'm not sure if that retail property is going to go away for them to build the fort. I, I, I'd, I'd sure love to see it happen. But, you know, there's already a pretty big urban footprint there. And rebuilding the fort, well, it would be a heck of a project. It, I, I do hope it happens, though. Made it up here, huh? Yes. Is that cool? Yeah. So it borders them. Santa Ana had troops here. And his troops knocked the walls down. Yeah. And they took the cannons. They knocked the castle bell off. And the trunnions off. Stuck a nail in the touch hole. Yes. And then buried them, 13 of them, across, down the street. Uh, with Indigo Hotel is, okay? Oh, Indigo, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's 18, May of 1836. And um, 
1852, I believe it was, a man named Samuel Maverick. He was one of the revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. He went here at the Battle of the Alamo. Anyways, he buys a piece of property from the Catholic Church, where the Indico Hotel is. And he wants to have a house when he gets up in the morning to see where his comrades die. He wants to go over the Alamo grounds, right? Mm -hmm. And they're putting in the flooring or the foundation. They come across the worker said, what are these tubes? It was the Alamo Cat, 13 of them. Uh, and that's why we have them today. They're over there. Uh, you got to get them from the inside, go around the back, okay. and they're on display. Yes, we yes. Sent them, we sent them all to Texas A&M. We were just started it a couple of years ago and had them all preserved. They'd been out there on the ground for years and years. Uh, you know? Yeah. And uh, we, uh, General Land Office got a call from Texas A&M. Uh, the, we sent them three at a time. And uh, they said that that four pounder you sent down it still has a load in it, a cannonball. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. That gives you goosebumps. Oh yeah. Oh my mm -hmm. god. Well, I mean, just the fact that yeah. it would have been loaded then and all that. Yeah, that know? 16 pounder on the blue carriage? Yes. That was used at the Battle of the Alamo. That so the, that, that's, a, that's the real deal. That's, that's the real thing, except okay. for the carriage. Of yeah, yeah. But the barrel. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the funeral pyres. They would have been over on Commerce Street. That where the red thing is, the red piece there's of There's one there, then there's one across the street from the St. Uh, jo uh, Joseph's Church over there. Okay, okay. And uh, they were over there. And then it's, it's Juan Seguin who will come back. He's a, he's a captain here at the Alamo. He's on a courier mission trying to get help. And he's at San Jacinto. It's Juan who will come back, gather the bones and ashes, put them in a big uh, uh, wooden coffin, bury them at the altar of the uh, San Fernando Cathedral. They're later putting the floor in there. Yeah. They discover this coffin. Yeah. And they take the ashes, put them in a big marble tomb. You can walk in the left door yes. and take pictures yeah. of it. Yeah. Wait, we're going to try to make it there for one of their services. I thought oh. that would be something great. Sure. Yeah, are they pretty casual? I mean, we were going to go down there in shirt and jeans. Yeah. Yeah, you go down there. It's open. As far as I know, it's open. You can walk in that hole. Yeah. There's two doors. One on the left yeah. and the right. Yeah. The left door is the, the, the uh, marble tomb. And then the, there's... One of the statues, one of the saints I've heard was preserved. Somebody found it. Do you know anything about that? Uh, that was on the wall. We have one that was in the lawn barrack. I think it's missing the head, though. But uh, well, Is it still there? No, they've got it somewhere else right now. Because okay. they've been doing preservation work in there. Yes, that statue's yes. up there right now. Okay. It could be inside. You just can't see it because uh, it got locked off. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate that. I sure think that's every... You know, I, I read over some books and stuff, but those were my last few, like, oh, I want to visualize where it was and stuff, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right there would be where the um, uh, main gate entrance of the Rui was. About where the tree is? Uh, it'd be up to the right of it. Because this is the Lasoy house, the wall would be huge. Well, here you see right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes, yeah, Lasoya yes. was born here in this house, and he dies here 29 years later, uh, 1936. But Bowie was in here. We think possibly already did when they came in. The Mexican accounts. No, this is, uh, and, and then I, when we were here last, it's been about three years ago we were here last, two or three years ago. Yeah. They were talking about kind of rebuilding the whole Alamo, but with glass. Do you know anything? I mean, were they still? T a lot of people didn't like the idea. You know, uh, kind of a see-through. I'll say this: this, this thing here, uh -huh. they really, they were very, very smart the way they did it. You know what they did? Yes. They didn't tell anybody. They just did it. Oh. By the time I saw it, this whole thing had been pretty much already oh. framed out and built. This thing had already been altered. So uh, here, they have to uh, keep it quiet. And I think any any changes they're going to make in the future, you're not going to hear about it. Yeah. It's already done. That. And the Lasoyas, you know, he had, they were here when they had this grand opening for this thing here a couple of weeks ago. Uh -huh. And I talked to this one lady, she was a descendant of Torbillo Lasoya. Yeah, yeah. And she's, I've been waiting for this for 30 years. Oh. This is her family's house. They had it. They, were, they, were, you know, they had the property oh. rights years ago. But uh, I think in the future, and there's going to be some changes. I know they got uh, three more major things they're going to do. And you won't know about it until it's already done. That's, that sounds like a good thing. No, yeah, well, yeah. we, we donate money to the, the American Battlefield Trust. Uh -huh. You know, they, they've gone in, you know, like Franklin, Tennessee. We're from Kentucky. Right. There's a lot of areas where they have gone in and, you know, you know General Lee's headquarters at Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. You know, it was surrounded by a crappy motel and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's back the way it was at the time of the battle. I cool. love that. I, I, obviously, I don't think they could do that in San Antonio like this, but it, well, it's see, great the North, when they do The North the Wall would go through that, that yes. U.S. Post Office. Yeah, yeah. They're not going anywhere. Yes. Yeah, I don't see that. But main gate could be right there. Yeah, they, they, I, I could see that happening. Not saying it's going to, but I could see it happening. That's nice. That's nice. Mm -hmm. 
So in the Palisade, that's the wall yeah. pocket was at. It's a wooden wall. I can see that yeah. happening. Oh, oh no, that that yeah. See, I, I, I can see all of this going on right here. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, that'd be great. But even from here, you get a good view of what what they have this here. You can see what yeah. here. Well, I mean, you can kind of start to figure out what was right. real and everything, right. so. Uh, well, I sure appreciate your time. Sure, thank thank sure. you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and I wish I caught that guy's name. He was gold, but he was one of the reenactors there at the Alamo. And then there's uh, some more kind of barriers where they're doing some re reconstruction. But, uh, but I hope you enjoyed that.